colors on it. <gasps> this one's so nice. Holy dooly. Look at the colors on that thing. Oh my gosh, it looks nothing like, well not. No, it's a different species. Oh. Those last ones we were finding were northern tree snakes. Oh. This is a common tree snake. Really thrashing around. Stinks, but. I was gonna say, is that you? Nah, <laughs> it's musking all over me. It's terrible. Look at the colors on this thing. Are we capturing that? Yeah, we. Like yeah. that is glowing. Is it glowing? Yeah. Yeah, it's glowing. Oh my lord. Another good sight out here in the toad country because these things are predominantly frog eaters. So something that eats frogs gets hit pretty hard with the toads. But in saying that, these are usually pretty common. For some reason, they didn't get as hard hit as some of the other species. Maybe they're just quicker to learn. But a very beautiful snake there. The Colby Brid. Um, and this. They've got solid teeth, so they're completely harmless. They don't have any venom at all. Um, and yeah, they're an arboreal species like all of our tree snakes. He's, you can see how he's wrapping me up and he's quick to, he's really mobile with his body lifting himself up like it's no worries at all. You can see that he's just made for just going through the trees, just spinning right out from branch to branch. And they come in a variety of different colors and patterns. You can get these things that are black, you can get them yellow, you can get them gray, you can get them green, um, you can get them blue, you can get them even more blue than this. They come in all sorts of different colors, but this one is very nice. It's like a, has that greeny underbelly and like a dark blue on top. And then in between those scales is just fluoro blue. Look at his neck. How good, how good is that? Does it look really good there? Yeah, it does. Oh my lord. It's unbelievable the variety of colors that these things actually come in, but when you see a nice one, no matter how common they are, you get them all through, all up the east coast of Australia, right down from Sydney, north up to here, and they head all the way over to Broome. So from there to here, there's probably 30 odd different color, colors and patterns you get them in. And everyone is a pretty spectacular looking snake. As far as colors go and Aussie snakes, I reckon these are hard to beat. It's maybe, maybe the green pythons for brightness, but these are a bit more interesting. They got, they got a lot of nice colors in between the scales. They have a few different, a few different colors. He's got a nice black head there. You see, he's not trying to bite me at all. But he's musking all over me. It stinks. Mm, stinks. Yeah, it doesn't smell that good. But how good is that? We've been puffing his throat out. Mm. So cool. And quite often you can hear them. They get themselves unstuck because you'll see them in a in it up in a tree, and they've got their head in the branch, and they've got their mouth, and they're hanging onto a big frog, and the frog's screaming, and you can just hear the frog screaming, and you look up. And you got this guy in there trying to eat the thing. And you can see that he does feed on quite a few frogs. He's got these massive, massive lumps. And that's called skin worm, which we've seen in a few other snakes. This is the parasite that they get from the frogs. And then it hosts under their skin. It doesn't seem to do them any, any, um, any damage to the snake, but it just looks a bit, looks a bit shit on them. There's such a wild looking bump. You'd almost think that was in the bone or something, but it's not. You can just... It just sits right under, it's like a fleshy little thing under his, under his skin there. Far out. How's looks that? So good. It looks so good. Yeah. We haven't seen a common tree snake this trip. I seen that dead one the other day that had the blue, the blue on it, but we've seen about three or four of the northern tree snakes, the Caligastra, which are a lot more drab compared to this. They still have the blue in between the scales, but they don't have the actual blue scales and that overall blue colour. Turquoise. Far oh, yeah. Look at it on there. Mm.
All right, we're gonna let this beautiful snake go. Excuse that cockatoo in the background. <laughs> GoPro's on 3%, so it's gonna have to be quick, but I hope that we can see just how nice this snake it's is. Too, it's a bit shady here. Is it? Yeah. That bird's still in my head in. Mm. All right, get him in the grass over here. Oh, if we just put him in there, that way. No, he doesn't want it. Oh, man. You can see just how quickly you lose a snake in the grass as soon as they, as soon as they get in it. Like, bright green, blue snake. It's just gone. Couldn't even tell you. Couldn't even find it. Very cool snakes. Good way to start the day. Hopefully we can find some more stuff. Got another big black whip snake crossing the road. This one's a lot larger than the last two that we've seen. And you'll notice that he's had a bit of a. Do you watch your arm? Yeah. Oh, he's had him. He's had himself a bit of a shitty shed. Now that's would normally be something to do with the animal's health or the conditions it's living in. Um, this animal is as is, is really as healthy as it can as it can be. So obviously it's had some sort of issue finding a humid area or something to um, to get rid of that retained shed. It's not really. I don't know, it looks like he's had it for a while. It's pretty dry on there. Um, like ideally what you would normally do would be to put him in a tub with some warm water, soak it, and you'd give it a hand getting it off. But yeah, you know, this is a wild animal. I'm not really gonna interfere with the course that, that it takes. And in saying that, it is coming off. It's not, it's not really doing a great deal. But this one's a lot larger than the previous two that we found. I actually had to, I didn't really know what, running back, I knew it was a black whip snake, but I didn't know what species. Like I said, you get both species up here. He's about to bite that camera. Look at him. And bite it, mate. Yeah, I didn't really know what species it was until I grabbed hold of it. It was moving that fast across the road. I had to pretty much blindly grab it. Realistically, it could have been like a black type hand and I wouldn't have had any idea or a big black eastern brown, but yeah. Very cool snakes, one of my favorites, especially once they get a little bit of a little bit of size to them. And they're obviously quite common. We found three of them in the last two days. It's a nice day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's early morning, I think it's about 8, 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock. So it's still a good time to be finding stuff. And we're just on our way out to our next campsite where we can hopefully do a bit of fishing, maybe find a couple more snakes. He'd just be out in now, cruising through these dry woodlands, just looking for a feed, which would mainly be um, skinks and probably in particular tenota skinks, these large striped skink species that we get up here. And he'd just sort of catch a glimpse of them through the brush and he'd just chase him down and he'd just grab him. These things are insanely fast. But anyway, we won't keep him too long. I'm pretty hungry, I'm keen to catch a, catch a feed, have a fish, hopefully find some new species. He's very curious of that camera. Mm. He's not actually biting it, no. but he's just curious. Look, he just wants, he just rests in his head on it. He just can't reach Kyla's fingers, so it's all right. No need to stress, but won't be the first or the last thing to bite that GoPro. Anyway, I'll let him go. 
you can maybe have a look how quick these guys Look at his head poking out there. <laughs> oh, how cute is he with his head out there? And there on that log, there's a skink that he'd be chasing. You better watch out, mate. Have a look at this little dude. Oh. He's gone, but he'll be toast in a minute if he doesn't watch out. I'm going to take a quick photo of this guy and we'll get back on the road.